Hello and welcome back to Miss Finance. In today's video we're going to focus on accounts preparation and in particular the bank T account because I know a lot of students struggle when they're first introduced to T accounts, particularly with the bank T account because there's so many debits and credits that are going in and out so it can be difficult to get an understanding of exactly what's going on and where they eventually sit in a set of financial statements. So we're going to go through that today so let's jump straight into it. So if we start off with a bank T account that's got absolutely nothing in there at all, what we're going to do is we're going to introduce capital into a company. So this is money that's been introduced by the business owner from their own personal money that they're putting into the company. This is going to increase the bank balance by £10,000. So we're going to debit the bank and you're going to see this on the left hand side of the T account because the bank in this case is an asset so that goes on the left. So if we take a look at the double entries here, we've capital introduced, we're going to debit the bank by £10,000 thousand pounds and we're going to credit the capital account by ten thousand pounds so both of those items sit on the balance sheets or the statement of financial position so next we're going to have bank interest received of five pounds so this is interest that we've received in the bank for having the ten thousand pounds in there and what we're going to do with the double entries there is we're going to debit the bank with five pounds and we're going to credit bank interest received in the statement of profit and loss or the income statement by five pounds because that's income received so we're therefore increasing the profit that we've got in the year in the income statement and we're increasing the bank in the balance sheet or the statement of financial position so you'll see this again on the left hand side of this bank T account next we decide that we require a loan from the bank of two thousand pounds in order to eventually purchase some office equipment so similar to the capital introduced and bank interest received we're increasing the bank balance so we want to debit the bank and increase the balance that we've got in there so if we take a look at the double entries here you can see the bank loan received would be a debit to the bank of two thousand pounds and a credit or a minus to loan payable of two thousand pounds so both of these again sit on the balance sheet or the statement of financial position and that two thousand pounds does not hit the profit and loss account. Next if we introduce the purchase of some office equipment for £8,000 what you'll see is that that is now on the right of this T account because we're reducing the amount of balance that's in the bank to pay for this office equipment. So the double entries here would be to debit office equipment so that's an asset that's now sat on our statement of financial position and equally we would now credit the bank by £8,000. So we've got an asset in the business now and office equipment is known as a tangible asset because it's physical, you can touch it. So we have tangible and non-tangible assets in a set of financial statements but the tangible assets are ones that you can physically touch and they would sit at the top of the statement of financial position or the balance sheet. So once we finish the T account for this bank account, we'll see that there's actually a balance carrying forward of £4,005. Now, the way that that's been worked out is that all your money in is on the left, as we've already spoken about. So they're all debits, so capital introduced, the bank interest received, and the loan received. And on the right, you've got the office equipment. But to work out the balance carried forward of £4,005, we're going to take the 10k, the 2k, and the £5 and add them up. And then we're going to take off the 8k, so that both sides balance. So you've got £12,005 on the left, and £12,005 on the right. Now if we were to look at this in the statement of financial position or the balance sheet, what you'll see is you'll have non-current assets at the top, which is the likes of your office equipment, your tangible assets, your intangible assets. And then we've got the bank, which is an asset, a plus on the statement of financial position of £4,005. Below that you'd have liabilities, your capital account of 10k and then your profit and loss reserve as well. Now in the way that this is laid out you'll also see that your non-current assets in your bank make up your assets, your liabilities make up your liabilities and your capital account and the profit and loss reserves make up the capital and equity. So if you remember the accounting formula is assets equals liabilities plus capital or equity. So if we were to look at this bank next year with the balance brought forward of £4,005 you'd see that on the left hand side of the bank because that's still a positive we've still got more in the bank as a positive item and asset so if we were to introduce rent into this bank account so a payment of rent of £5,000 in the year that would sit on the right hand side of this T account 
And what you'd see in the double entry is that we're going to debit rent in the statement of profit and loss, otherwise known as the income statement, and we're going to credit the bank 5k. So the 5k is going to reduce what we've got on the balance sheet or the statement of financial position, and the rent is going to increase the cost that we've got in the profit and loss. So by doing this, we're reducing our overall profit in the income statement or the statement of profit and loss. So next, if we introduce wages, so that's going to sit on the right hand side of this bank T account because that is a credit. We're going to reduce the amount that we've got sat in the bank. The double entries there would be to debit wages cost in the statement of profit and loss or income statement because we're going to reduce profit in the year. And then obviously we're going to credit the bank by £3,000 because we want to reduce what we've got sat in the bank. So in this case, what you can see is that the rent and wages of £8,000 far outweigh any income that we've received in the year. They outweigh how much we've brought forward from the bank. So we had £4,005 in the bank at the beginning of the year. We've paid out more than what we had. So we now actually have an overdraft of 3995 were overdrawn on the bank. And the way that we've worked this out is if we take the £8,000, which is your rent and wages added together, and then minus £4,005, you get £3,995, because both of those sides have to balance back to the £8,000. So it might cause some confusion to you if you see that where there's a balance on both sides, both an opening and closing balance, then this is exactly why, because you might have, in one year, a balance brought forward that's a positive balance in the bank, but then the amount carried forward is actually overdrawn. You can have it vice versa as well. So it's important just to understand that. So how would this look on the statement of financial position or the balance sheet? So you'd have your non-current assets at the top, as we spoke about before, so your tangibles, your intangible assets, and then you'd have your liabilities to follow, which are a negative on this statement of financial position. Now, the bank has now moved down. So that's now overdrawn by £3,995, so it's no longer sitting at the top with all the assets. Yeah, it actually makes up your total liabilities. So it's moved further down, so it's now just sitting above capital accounts and the profit and loss reserves. And this is because we now owe money to the bank. So if we look at this in terms of the accounting equation, you'll see that the non-current assets make up your assets now. Your liabilities in your bank overdrawn make up your total liabilities and your capital account and profit and loss reserves still make up your capital account. So if we were to carry that bank balance forward again by another year, what we'd see is the bank carried forward balance is now on the right because that's overdrawn at the beginning of the year. Whereas in our previous example, that was a positive balance at the beginning of the year. So again, if we introduced rent into the T account on wages of £3,000, you'd see that on the right. And then this time round, we actually receive a sales receipt of £6,000 in the year. So we're starting to make a little bit of money with this company that we've just sell. So this would show as a debit on the left-hand side of the bank because we're increasing our bank balance. And the double entries there would be to credit the receipt from the customer. So credit sales income in effect by £6,000 in the income statement or the statement of profit and loss and debit the bank by £6,000 because we want to increase what we've got in the bank. We're increasing the asset that we've got within the bank. And that again is why it would sit on the left-hand side of this bank T account. So overall, we have a balance carried forward of 5,995 because unfortunately, again, in this case, the 3,995 pound brought forward plus the 8,000 pounds spent in the year outweighs the sales receipt of 6,000 pounds. So we've still got an overdrawn balance and we've actually got an increase in the overdrawn balance to 5,995. So again, if you wanted to work this out and add totals to the bottom, you'd find that the total on the right is 11,000 and by introducing this balance carried forward of 5,995, we now balance back to the 11,995. And again, if you want to see this on a statement of financial position or the balance sheet, you'd see we have non-current assets at the top, followed by the liabilities, followed by this bank overdrawn of 5,995, followed by the capital account of 10k, and the profit and loss reserves. And equally, Non-current assets make up the assets, the liabilities and bank overdrawn make up liabilities, and the capital account and the profit and loss reserves make up the capital or equity. So I hope you found this video useful. If you liked it, please do hit the like button, consider subscribing, and I shall see you on the next video.